Hello everyone. Today I am going to talk about the radiation safety. I am Jeffy Nainan, the radiation safety officer for the hospital. So, in this radiation safety presentation, I will be uh, talking about the, uh, about the radiation, what are the different types of radiations and uh, how is it going to be affecting on a patient body or a human body, how harmful it is going to be, what are the sources in our hospital where and all we are, we are using the radiation, how to protect yourself and some protective devices. So, these are the points which I am going to cover today. So, first of all, you should know what is a radiation. So, a, a radiation, if you have to define, it is the energy in the form of a waves or a particles. Any energy in the form of a waves or a particle, you can call it as a radiation. So, we have a wide range of uh, radiation spectrum here. So, in this particular slide, if you refer, you can see that the, there is a, a good range of electromagnetic spectrum here starting from radio waves going up to the gamma rays. So, in this spectrum, I will divide this into two halves that is one is I call it as non-ionizing radiation and the second part I am going to call them as a ionizing radiation. Non-ionizing radiations uh, for example, uh, we have radio waves, microwaves, infrared, visible light, even light is also a type of radiation. So, up to ultraviolet, starting from radio waves up to ultraviolet, I can call them as non-ionizing radiations and whatever is beyond the ultraviolet, I call them as ionizing radiations. Now, you should know what is an ionizing radiation. An ionizing radiation is something which may be harmful to a human body. Okay. It can cause, if a human body is exposed to ionizing radiations, sometimes that can cause a cell to die or sometimes uh, it can cause some uh, minimal damages which the cell itself can repair because cell has got a repairing capability. So, it can repair itself and sometimes if it causes some damage to the DNA, it can mutate. So, a cell will mutate and that will uh, form to a cancerous cell sometimes. So, uh, anything beyond ultraviolet say alpha, beta, gamma, x-rays all these are ionizing radiations. So, these are harmful to a human body if you are exposed to and that is what is I am worried about here. Because in our hospital we deal with mostly ionizing radiations. Okay. Now, if you have to see uh, the different sources of radiation where and all we are getting the radiation. So, this slide it shows the sources of radi radioactivity in the in our, uh, in the world. So, uh, if you see here, 37 percentage of the radiation that that is a radon gas. Radon gas is a byproduct of uh, granite material. So, wherever you have granite, it emits a, a gas which is radioactive. Okay, so that consists of 37 percentage. 13 percentage that comes from the terrestrial radiation which is present in the earth and the atmosphere. Okay. So, that consists of 13 percentage, 11 percentage that is from the cosmic radiation that comes from the solar system or anything outside the atmosphere. So, that is uh, contributing around 11 percentage and you can see uh, we are also a okay, human body also uh, emitting some kind of a radiation. So, human population is contributing 7 percentage of the total amount of radiation here. So, what is the radioactive present in a human body? It is K40, K40 is nothing but potassium. Our body, human body has got potassium and that is radioactive, it emits some kind of a radiation. So, the total human body is contributing 7 percentage of the radiation to the total amount of radiation and 1 percentage that is uh, being contributed from the nuclear industries where you, uh, where they develop nuclear weapons, atomic bombs. Uh, such kind of industries that is contributing around 1 percentage of the total amount of radiation. Now, you see the last part that is 31 percentage is being used in a medical setups. In hospitals, we are, we hospitals, we are using 31 percentage of the total amount of radiation. So, now when you come to a hospital, where and all we use radiation, what are the different applications of radiation in a hospital? So, if you see one by one, the main would be diagnosis. We use radiation for the different diagnostic purposes. 
So like say in x-ray or uh, in uh, dental x-ray we have uh, nuclear medicine departments. So they all uh, use different types of radiation for the diagnostic purpose. We also use it for the treatment of cancer. Okay, uh, we have a radiation oncology department. They, uh, we deal with uh, very high energy radiation and uh, we are using it for, for the treatment of cancer. And uh, we can also use radiation for the sterilization and also for the blood ir irradiation purpose. So, so few blood products has to be irradiated before giving it to the patient. So, these are the different applications of radiation. Now, if you want to see uh, what are the different uh, departments where we use radiation, this I'll go one by one. Uh, this I just wanted to make sure that everyone knows where which departments use radiation here. So the first department I'll introduce is the radiation oncology department. So that is in the lower ground floor. We have a radiation oncology department and there are three machines available in the radiation oncology. So we have two linear accelerators and one brachytherapy unit uh, is available at the radiation oncology department, which is used exclusively for the treatment of cancer. Linear accelerator, it uses very high energy X-rays and electrons for the treatment of cancer. But at the same time, uh, brachytherapy, we have a radioactive isotope. Okay, radioactive isotope is something which emits radiation 24 by 7. So we have a radioactive isotope that is iridium-192, which is used in the brachytherapy machine. And uh, it emits radiation 24 by 7. So whenever we want, when whenever you want a patient to be treated, we, the source will go to the patient body. And once the treatment is over, it goes back again to the machine. So if you are to see the main difference between a radioactive isotope and X-ray machine, LINAC is an X-ray machine. Okay. What is the difference between X-ray machine and a radioactive isotope? Radioactive isotope, as I told you, it emits radiation every time. 24 by 7, it is emitting continuously. Whereas, wherever you have a X-ray machine, it emits radiation only when you switch on the beam. So, the next department to introduce is Diagnostic Radiology Department. And our Diagnostic Radiology Department is located in the ground floor. So these are the machines. In the slide, you can see uh, the machines which emits X-rays. So you have a diagnostic X-ray, a fixed X-ray unit. We have a fluoroscopy unit. We have a mammography unit. There is a BMD or a bone marrow densitometer. There are three mobile X-ray units, and there is a CT machine. All these machines uh, in the in this slide, it emits low energy X-rays, and all these machines are used for the diagnostic purpose. Now I have a question for everyone. A diagnostic department, they do have a MRI machine and ultrasound machine with them, but it is not listed in the slide here. What would be the reason? Because an MRI, it works with the principle of magnetic resonance imaging and uh, MRI, M magnetic resonance imaging, and it works with the principle of magnetic fields. So there is absolutely no radiation emits from a MRI machine. Similarly, if you uh, if you say ultrasound, ultrasound stands for Ultra, it is works with the principle of ultrasonic sound waves. So again, there is no radiation uh, coming out of a ultrasound machine. That is why MRI and ultrasound are not listed in the slide here. So the next department here is the interventional radiology. We have a cath lab department, we have a OT, there is a endoscopy department. All these departments, they use radiation for the inter interventional procedures. Okay, so with the help of radiation, they do interventional procedures. So these are the examples. We have a cath lab is an interventional radiology unit, OT we can say, and uh, endoscopy also is kind of interventional radiology department. Nuclear medicine department uh, is the next one. Nuclear medicine department is located in the lower ground floor, very next to radiation oncology department. And uh, uh, you can see the images, the machines available with the nuclear medicine department in the slide here. So PET CT is there. Uh, PET CT is nothing but it has got a uh, X-ray imaging uh, device also, but most of the time the PET CT and gamma camera is used to detect the radiation that comes from the patient. So in a nuclear medicine department, please remember the patients are injected with the radioactive medicines, and once they are injected with the radioactive medicines, they themselves become radioactive. Okay, they they will be emitting radiation. Uh, next department is the dental radiography or the dental department. We have it in the OPD uh, in the ground floor. So a dental department has got uh, 
two intraoral machines and one OPG machine with them and all the three X-ray machines are used for the diagnostic purpose. Again very low energy X-rays are used for the diagnostic purpose here. So, next departments uh, are one is lithotripsy, there are two CMs, one in the lithotripsy room in the third floor and another one is the endoscopy department. They also do have a CM which is used for the interventional radiology purpose. Other than this, I also mentioned it uh, in the diagnostic departments, they, uh, they do have three mobile x-ray units. So, one is located in the emergency department, one is in the ICU and other is being used for in the floors. So, mobile x-ray machines are used whenever uh, say if you cannot take a patient near to the x-ray room, we can take the machine near to the patient. patient or the patient bed and you can expose, you can get the images done. So, that is where we use mobile x-rays. Next comes to the types of effects. Now, what happens if you are exposed to uh, radiation? What are the harmful effects of radiation? Now, effects of radiation, we have divided this into two groups. The first group, I call it as a deterministic effects and the second one, I call it as a stochastic effects. Deterministic effects are the one which we can determine early. It is something which I can predict. It has got a threshold limit. If you cross that particular limit, then only deterministic effects are going to happen. Anything which does not have a threshold limit, we have put it under stochastic effects. So, stochastic effects, they are probabilistic in nature. It may happen or it may not happen also. So, examples for deterministic effects are death, skin burns, cataract and infertility. Death can happen if you are exposed to a very large amount of radiation such uh, like ha what happened in a Hiroshima and Nagasaki. There was a bomb, atomic bomb explosions and if you are exposed to such large amount of radiation, there are chances of death to happen. Skin burns will happen if one part of your body being exposed for a larger period of time. If your eyes are exposed, cataract can happen and if your reproductive organs are exposed, there are chances of infertility to develop. So, these are the examples for deterministic. Next comes a stochastic effects. Cancer is one uh, examples for a stochastic effects. Yes, we do treat uh, cancer with the help of radiation, but at the same time, if your normal cells are exposed to radiation, there are chances of uh, radiation induced cancer to develop. So, cancer is radiation induced cancer is a type of uh, stochastic effects and uh, genetic effects also is a stochastic effect. If your DNA is damaged, there are chances of mutations to happen and uh, this will not happen to the person who is exposed, it will happen to their next generation, maybe second, third or fourth generation only this genetic effects will start appearing. So, that is why we have put it under stochastic effects. Basically, a radiation can cause both deterministic and stochastic effects. Now, you know the harmful effects of radiation. Now, what is the safe dose limits? Okay, you should know what are the safe doses of radiation to work with. So, before that, in a hospital, if you are talking about a medical setup, what are those categories, different categories of uh, uh, humans you should be, uh, who should be protected from radiations. So, there are patients who come for the different types of examinations. So, they have to be protected from radiation. It is not like you can give any amount of radiation for every patient you can expose or you can take x-ray or CT and uh, let them go. No, that is not allowed. Uh, then uh, sometimes you may have to call a patient party if a child comes for a CT, uh, CT examination or uh, x-ray examination, you may, you may have to bring the patient attendant also along with the child. So, they will be exposed to some unwanted radiation. So, they have to be protected. Radiation workers are there, those who are working in the radiation departments, we call, we call them as a radiation worker. And general public, anyone who comes or anyone who is in the in the hospital, we call them as a general public category. So when you, we have when they put when the regulatory bodies when they have designed this dose limitations, uh, these dose limits are applied only for the public and for the occupational exposures. It is not limited for the medical exposures. Medical exposures are not considered in the safe dose limits here and it is always assumed that the benefit for the patient outweigh the risk. So, uh, every country it has got a regulatory body. 
So, in India AERB or Atomic Energy Regulatory Board is the body which regulates the usage of radiation and they have set the different dose limits for different categories of people here. So, in this slide if you see if we have divided the, uh, the total amount of population into two main groups. The first group I am going to call them as general public and the second group I am going to call them as a radiation worker. Radiation workers are anyone who is working in the radiation department I call them as a radiation worker and anyone who is not belonging to a radiation department we have put them or we have classified them as a general public category. So, the dose limit set by uh, Atomic Energy Regulatory Board for a radiation worker is 20 millisievert per year. MSV stands for millisievert and sievert is a unit for radiation absorbed to a human body. So, on an average per year 20 millisievert is the limit that is set by AERB for a radiation worker and this is for a 5 year period and in 5 years maximum a person can go is only 100 millisievert. And for a general public category, the limit is only 1 millisievert per year. It is, uh, it is not 20 here. For a general public, anyone who is not working with the radiation, the limit is set as only 1 millisievert per year. Again, it is averaged over a 5 year period and a maximum a general public can go in 5 years is 5 millisieverts. And why there is a difference here? For a radiation worker, it is 20 millisievert and for a general public, it is 1 millisievert. What could be the reason? because a radiation worker, we call them as a radiation worker only if they have certain qualifications to work with the radiation and only once they turn 18 years of age, we call them as a radiation workers. Also, all radiation workers are provided with the safety equipments like some protective equipments are provided to the uh, radiation workers and they are provided with a monitoring devices also to know how much radiation they are exposed to. We cannot give a protective device or a monitoring device to the general public and also a general public category that starts from small children to the adults. So, there is a large group of people is included in the general public category that is why we have put a lower limit to the radiation so for the general public. Now, there is a special situation here. This is for a pregnant woman radiation worker. A radiation woman radiation worker, once she become pregnant, there is a different limit is applied to her. That is, the dose limit to the embryo or fetus shall be 1 millisievert for the remainder of the pregnancy. Her embryo or fetus should not be receiving not more than 1 millisievert during the pregnancy. Why? What is the reason? Because the fetus or embryo, we cannot, we cannot call it as a radiation worker. It comes in the general public category. So, that is the reason we have set a lower limit to the uh, pregnant radiation woman here. And uh, next comes the trainees. Anyone who is aged less than 18 years and if they have to work in the radiation department, we call them as a trainee. And for trainees, the limit is set as 6 millisievert per year. 6 millisievert per year is a, a year is a limit that is set for a trainees. So, if any uh, woman workers, radiation workers, if they become pregnant, please inform this to your immediate superiors or to the radiation safety officer because your work condition has to be altered. They should not be working with the radiation department anymore. They have to be uh, ke uh, kept away from the radiation departments. Now comes the, uh, the protection part. So, you know the different types of radiation, the departments where we use radiation, what are the harmful effects and the dose limits. Now, how will you protect yourself? So, for radiation protection, we have three principles of radiation protection. That is, first one says justification of a practice. You have to justify each practice. No exposures unless there is a real benefit. So, a patient comes to the hospital, you cannot uh, take every patient who is coming to the hospital for a radiation examination. So, that has to be justified whether that is really required or not. So, you have to evaluate between the benefit versus the risk. Whichever, whichever, whichever has got the higher limit, you have to go according to, according to it. So, if you feel a radiation is going to give a benefit to the patient, then you should go ahead with the examinations. Now, if you think the patient is going to go under a risk due to that radi radi radiation study, 
then you should cancel it. So that is what justification of a practice is. Next comes the individual dose and risk limits. You know the dose limits already, the safe dose limits for the different categories of paper. So you have to work within those dose limits. No unacceptable dose or risk levels. Okay, this is apply applicable for both general public and the radiation workers. Third comes optimization of a protection. Now you have to optimize your work practices. How will you optimize? Try to receive as low as reasonably achievable. The we have we are following a Alara approach. Alara stands for in the slide you can see. Alara stands for as low as reasonably achievable. Try to receive the radiation as less as possible. There are three ways of doing it. That is by time, distance and shielding. Time, distance and shielding are the three ways to protect yourself. How time is uh, affecting here or how time is dependent here? What happens if you spend more time in a radiation area? You get more exposure. Okay. So try to reduce the time you spend in a radiation department so that the radiation that you get will be less. That is what time it is directly proportional. You increase the time, you get more radiation. You decrease the time, you get less radiation. The third one is distance. Uh, distance is something uh, like you maintain the distance, you increase the distance away from the radiation. If you if you are close to the radiation, you get more radiation. If you don't want to be in a radiation room, say uh, in an x-ray room, if you don't want to be inside a radiation room, you stay away from that, stay away from the radiation area so that your radiation exposure will be reduced. The third approach is shielding. You use some shielding devices so that you can reduce the exposures. Put something between yourself and the radiation so that it will stop the radiation that is coming to you. So in this slide you can see we have different uh, personal protective equipments uh, available with us. So examples are lead goggles, lead gloves, lead aprons, thyro shields, guna shields and mobile lead barriers. These are the different personal protective equipments and whenever you are in the radiation area please make use of this. Uh, protective equipments because it is going to save you from 80 to 90 percentage of the radiation. It can stop 80 to 90 percentage of the radiations. And whenever you use a lead apron, please remember these steps. In the slide you can see we have provided hangers to all the departments, all the radiation departments are provided with the hangers. After the use, it has to be returned to the hangers. Do not fold, do not dump it on the floor because if you fold it or if you dump it on the floor, there are chances of cracks to develop and through the cracks radiation will pass through. So that is the reason we say after the use, the lead apron has to go back to the hangers. It has to be in the hanging positions. We do check the integrity of uh, these lead aprons once in six months for any normal wear and uh, tears. So in this slide, you can see a result of improper storage and handling. You can see the lead aprons are almost torn here. Now, next comes the radiation uh, shielding. When you are working with the intervention radiology or a CM, how, how you should you make use of the radiation shielding devices? So in a cath lab and uh, in the intervention radiology rooms, they are, there are ceiling mounted screens, there are uh, lateral shields and table curtains are available as, as you can see in the slide here. So there are ceiling mounted screens, lateral shields and table curtain. Please make use of this uh, shielding uh, devices available with the cath labs. They can provide more than 90 percentage protection from scattered radiation in the fluoroscopy. And whenever you use a CM, please make sure that the X-ray device or the X-ray source is below the table. It should not be above the ta above the table because if it is above the table, it can increase the radiation drastically. So to reduce it, the reduce the scatter radiation that you are getting, the x-ray device or the x-ray source has to be below the table and always stand on the side of the transmitted beam that is by the detector and keep x-ray tube under the patient tab tables. Now you know the different departments. How will you identify which room has got the radiation uh, device or the radiation uh, x-ray x-ray emitting devices in the which room so we have some warning signs and symbols so you can see in the slide here we have two types of radiation warning signs 
So, one uh, is with a x-ray machine symbol which is written also in Caution X-ray in English, Hindi and in the Arabic language. We have, uh, we have a good number of Arabic patients comes to our hospital that is why the third language is used as Arabic here. And the other symbol that is a trifoil we call it, trifoil is used wherever we use radioactive isotopes. So, I mentioned earlier also in a radiation oncology department with the brachytherapy machine and in the nuclear medicine department are the two departments we, where we use radioactive isotopes. And the difference between an isotope, radioactive isotope and x-ray machine is, x-ray machine it emits radiation only when you switch on the beam and, and a radio isotope it emits radiation 24 by 7. That is why we have got two different symbols. We do have a red warning light installed at all radiation rooms. So, if the light is on that indicates radiation is on inside. Now, comes to the personal monitoring. So, this is for all the radiation workers or those who are working in the radiation departments. All the radiation workers we are pro we have provided them with a personal monitoring device. So, the personal monitoring device which we have is a thermoluminescent dosimeter or we call it as a TLD badge. So, we have two types of TLD badge, one is a chest TLD badge and another one is a wrist TLD badge. You can see in the image in the slide here, wrist TLD badges are given to all uh, radiation workers, those who handle radioactive isotopes and uh, rest of the people we have provided them with a chest TLD badge only. So, also we have seen uh, people wearing at the wrong areas, if it has to be a chest TLD badge, it has to be at the chest level itself. Please remember a uh, few points, whenever you are using a lead apron, you have to use the TLD behind the lead aprons because lead aprons are used to save you from radiation. It is going to protect you from radiation. It will stop 90 to 80 to 90 percentage of radiation. So, whenever you use a lead apron, the TLD patch has to be behind the lead aprons. Also, please note TLD will not protect you from radiation. It can only measure the dose that you received. It is a monitoring device. We do have this radiation survey meters available with us. This is uh, used to monitor the radiation in and around the radiation uh, departments. So, to check any scattered or leakage radiations, we do check once in four months to make sure that we are working in a safe environment. So, that is all about the radiation safety. So, this is my last slide here, radiation need not be feared, but it must command your respect. Thank you so much.